Welcome to Season 2 of the Practicing Presence Podcast, where spiritual formation is fueled through a variety of practices rather than a single prescriptive time of devotion, where we discuss different spiritual practices that help us be more present with God, others, and ourselves. What's going on, practitioners? What's up, friends? How we doing? Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. We are here to continue our conversation about lament. Is this continuing conversation or is this first? No, this nope, is continuing. this is continuing. Yep, we introduced uh, it last week. We did. So we're going to talk about lament. And if you listen to yesterday's episode of Let's Talk, me and Colin are both in that state of lament right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The I mean, if you listen to last week's episode, you know that the reason I wanted to do this series is because um, I'm in a season of lament, mm-hmm. have been for some time. And uh, was just coming out of my season um, about a month ago. And then this Ukraine stuff started and went right back into it. Yep. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm kind of naturally kind of a political nerd mm-hmm. junkie. Um, I don't really do a lot of like foreign policy stuff. So like this is my area of politics that's pretty lacking. But... Um, so like as all of this stuff started and I'm on, you know, following all these political accounts and stuff, uh, I just immediately was so angry yeah, and just wanting to lament and go, what, what is happening? Like, why, Mm. you know? Mm. Uh, and I think that's the thing that I want everybody to know. And like own about lament is lament is that that space where I can go. Why? Yeah. Why is this happening? Why is this thing that I can't understand that causes so much pain and hurt? Why is it happening? Mm -hmm. And I get to go say that to a God who I believe to be creator and sustainer of life and go, what the heck are you doing, bro? Yeah. And so, how can you do that? Well, there are two types of lament. Hopefully, we'll look at a couple of them uh, today. We'll probably pick some. We'll probably pick some out of the Psalms. If you didn't know, if you're looking for a place in the Bible, Psalms really good place to go find laments. About a third of the Psalms are laments. Mm-hmm. About one in three, thirty three percent of the hundred and fifty of them are laments. Um, but you have individual lament and you have communal lament. So what would be an example of individual lament? Um, Clayton, what are you mad about these days? Not, not war, not Ukraine, not, not. So, um, some, something, what are you mad about? I am mad about the John MacArthur bull crap happening right now. Okay. Yeah. I am mad about that. That that could go either way. That could be an individual lament or a communal, communal lament. lament. Yeah. Um, okay. Why are you mad about that? One more old ass white dude with too much power um, oppressing people who are just trying to live their lives. Um, well said. And I couldn't have said it any I'm myself. just sick of it. Yeah. And it makes it even worse that this man um, has built an entire brand based on the idea of Jesus, and he he's not living Jesus. Um, it it's just awful to me. So yes, <laughs> it's yeah. awful. And do you have you ever met John MacArthur? No, never. Have you ever personally met anyone from no. the church? Okay. Never. You ever personally met a victim of like abuse at the hands of his church no. or leaders? Okay. No. Uh, do you feel like it's okay for you to be mad about this? Absolutely. Okay. Because it's misrepresenting Christians yeah. and Christianity in general. Yeah, yeah. And I fall under that category of Christians. And right. so, yeah. If, <laughs> Great. Yeah, 
I feel like I am justified in being angry at this. I would agree with you. Yeah. 100%. That's individual lament. Mm -hmm. You have experienced an individual problem, something that you deem uh, impacting on your current situation Mm -hmm. uh, to the point that you need to voice your displeasure to God. Mm -hmm. That's individual lament. Clayton, what is another thing you might be upset about these days? Oh. (laughs) Um... Honestly, I am trying to not be so upset about things because I find that I get so invested in them. And do be like that sometimes. And I need to not focus on those things. Um, so I've been doing really good about like lamenting over the big things that I see happening. Yeah. Um, like the John MacArthur thing, like the Ukraine thing. Yeah. I'm trying to let the little things just kind of roll off. Yeah. Well, I can uh, tell you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, you can lament. Anybody can lament any situation. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I think last time I talked a little bit about my divorce. Um, right now, I think more so like personal laments. Um, uh also, laments are not just anger. They can also be like mourning or grief. Sure. Um, I think before I was angry and lamenting at God that they would allow this to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think in that, I think I was specifically lamenting my wife or my ex-wife. Now... That's not what I'm lamenting at all. I don't lament over her Mm -hmm. at all. I lament over the loss of what I could have had. Mm -hmm. The dream of being married for 60 years, two kids, two great kids, you know, the 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 picture perfect family. Yeah. All the, all the things that my kids could have had. Mm -hmm. That is now what I lament. So you, you go through a season of lament and you hopefully go from anger to grief healed Mm -hmm. and that would be the goal right is you you go through these processes of lamenting so that you can get to a place of restoration um and you can lament financial situations Mm -hmm. loss of job not enough money uh too many like car repairs medical bills you know you you name it financial um concerns you can lament over those health Yep. Medical stuff, uh, school issues, stresses at work. Whatever you got. Yeah, anything anything that's impacting your individual life in a way that you go, God, this, what is happening? That's individual lament. Now, communal lament. This is, you mentioned, well, we've actually mentioned two great examples of communal lament. Um, number one would be like an, like a nation, Mm -hmm. like the nation of Israel lamenting and lamentations Mm. or the nation of Israel. If we have time, we might look at it, uh, lamenting in Psalm 12 Mm. to communal lament. Um, but another way that you could see lament, which I think I would really like to see happen more would be a community of people who have the same experience. Mm. So all the people whom Mark Driscoll and John MacArthur have abused Mm. would come together and now they're not exactly the same. They're not part of the same nation. They're not part of the same tribe. They may not even be from the same state, you know, all those things. But they have a similar experience, mm-hmm. and that experience is binding upon them so that community mm-hmm. can lament together. Which, if you listen to the Rise and Fall of Mars Hill, you actually know that a lot of uh, Driscoll's victims still are like super close today in their deconstruction. Yep. Um, and are helping each other through things. 
Yep. Like still trying to heal from it. Um, trauma is also like bonding. <laughs> uh, yes, that's why we call them trauma bonds. Yeah. Uh, this is a real thing, guys. Yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, a g- another good example that I just thought of, I think, of communal lament could be... Did you ever watch that video that I sent you the other day uh, that was on campus at Baylor? Um, I remember seeing it, but I don't remember if I watched it or not. It was so there's this whole exhibit right now um, based around the outfits that females were wearing when they were first sexually assaulted. And it's just all over the place. All the girls that were sexually assaulted in the Baylor scandal from the football program? I don't know if it's specifically that, just because some of them are like little girl clothes. Mm. It's just the first time that they were sexually assaulted. Got it. Wow. Um, and that would be a form of a communal lament. That would be. That would be. Yeah, that absolutely would be communal lament. Um, another way that you would see communal lament experienced would be but an entire like community of faith mm. lamented over the same thing. So for instance, if John MacArthur's church wasn't, you know, so beholden to him, if the entire church just said, Nope, this is heinous. No. We're going to lament this yeah. as a community of faith. Um, I remember there was a church um, that their church burned down. Mm. And uh, the church went through a season of lament as a community yeah. that their church burned down. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you can, have com- about that. you can have communal laments in those kinds of ways. Um I remember, I don't know why I'm talking about it as if it was a one-time thing. Every time, God, I wish I didn't have so many points of reference for this. Um, and I wish like it would just stop happening. But every time we get a young African-American man who's shot by a police officer, Every black church laments together that young man's death. Yeah. Um, It's true. As they should. Yeah. As they should. Um, Yeah. (laughs) You know, it was, and this is going to sound really terrible, and I don't mean it to sound that way, but. I didn't realize how much privilege I had until I started learning about lament and realized I'd never done it before. Hmm. Have you ever had a tragedy big enough in your life that you're like at the point where you just want to say, screw you, God? Yeah, that's a lot of privilege. Um, And so I think personally, um, Christianity would be better if we lamented more. Christianity would be better if we lament. Christianity would be better if we lamented the own tragedies in our history. Mm-hmm. Christianity yeah, would that. be better if we lamented the Crusades. Yep. Christianity would be would be better if we lamented the abuse of power mm-hmm. by spiritual leaders. Mm-hmm. Christianity would be better if we lamented with wept alongside all the victims of sexual abuse at the hands of pastors. Christianity would be better if we lamented, but we don't. Um, Because didn't you know we're Christians? We can't do anything wrong because, you know, we have grace. And like, golly, I don't, yeah. If that's how it is, we've missed the dang story. But isn't that the narrative that is presented like, more or less, like, we as Christians really can't do anything wrong. I don't think it's so much that. I think it's just a level of complacency. It's like, well, if I do, there's grace for me. Um, but more so what I think it is, is I think people at the top 
finding ways to protect themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I would agree with that, but also yet still trying to justify it using scripture. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because you can take anything in that book and read it a certain way and you can find some sort of pro your side, whatever the issue is. Oh, I tell people all the time, if you want to make that book oppress people, it will. If you want to make that book liberate people, it will. It just depends on how you read it. Exactly. So therefore, you really can't do anything wrong. Yes. That book will do whatever you want it to do. Yep. Um, Because we're also talking about it covering thousands of years of history. Mm -hmm. That book can do whatever you want it to do. The question is, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to bring life and experiences of life? Mm-hmm. Do you want it to bring death and experiences of death? Mm-hmm. Um, I personally want life. It's what Jesus says that I should want. That's what I'm going to want. That's what I'm going to go for. So communal laments. Um, Do you think Ukraine is communally lamenting? Absolutely. Yeah, we see them on video. Yeah. I heard a woman. She's on, it was on Instagram. And uh, I'm sitting here debating with myself on it. And Screw it. I'm going to do it. If it makes me put the explicit label on, I'm sorry. I want to be faithful to what she said. Uh, she's crying. She's standing outside of a bomb site. She's holding her little, her daughter. She's clearly overcome with emotion, fighting back tears. And as the tears start to roll, she looks at the person holding the camera and says, stop this goddamned war. I don't know that there's ever been a more simple lament stated. Um, I don't know that lament has ever been so accurately depicted than in that moment where this woman clearly just lost everything holding our daughter literally in shock because her entire world was just blown to bits overcome with emotion because I now do not feel safe because all of my life is gone. My country is gone. My city is gone. It's not even as if mine burned down and insurance is going to no. All of my existence, down to my job and the city I live in and the country that I call home, may may be gone. And I have to leave, and I don't know what to do, and I really don't feel safe. And the only words I can muster when I'm overcome with emotion is stop this goddamn war. Um, Yeah. There's never been a more beautiful picture of lament It's never been a more beautiful picture of why we need lament. Thanks for listening to the Practicing Presence podcast hosted by Wellhouse Church. Be sure to give us a rating and a review if you enjoyed the episode. It's free and it helps us immensely. Also, feel free to check out our other podcasts.